the New Jersey Meadowlands on Wednesday night after being hit in the crotch by a lighter thrown from the audience. Rose was not seriously hurt, and after walking off stage about two hours into the band's usual three-hour set, he said, quote, I got my philosophy on this from Lemmy and Motorhead. Don't let them throw things at your show, because it could happen at the next, next band's show, and someone could get hurt. Rose's voice also started going during the band's New York stand, forcing Rose on doctor's orders to cancel a Friday show at Foxborough Stadium near Boston, which has been rescheduled for September 11th, and a Sunday night show in... Seventh, a concert in Minneapolis next Wednesday, however, is still on. Said Rose after reluctantly agreeing to the cancellations, I'm bummed. We're going to step aside. Recent memory blew into the Canadian provincial capital of Montreal on Saturday night and ended in a riot after Metallica frontman James Hetfield was sent to the hospital with exploding pyrotechnic injuries and Guns frontman Axl Rose abruptly ended his band set with some ominous comments about the band's future. At least eight police and ten concertgoers sustained minor injuries in the melee that followed. A dozen arrests were made and initial reports estimated damage to the stadium to nearby stores to total as much as one million dollars. Things started going wrong about halfway through Metallica's set when a stage prop exploded, inflicting second-degree burns on James Hetfield's arms and legs. The band was forced to terminate its set, promising the crowd it would return to play a makeup show. And Hetfield was taken to a nearby hospital for treatment. When Guns N' Roses took the stage about two and two hours and 15 minutes later, according to Montreal Gazette rock critic Mark Lepage, who was in the audience, the band played about six songs before Axl Rose told the audience, quote, we got it together in Europe only to have it come apart here. In case anyone is interested, this is going to be our last show for a long time. Rose then song, dub sang Double Talk and Jive, and then Civil War, and then walked off. Although press reports have blamed Rose's hasty exit on his ongoing throat problems, which have forced cancellation of three U.S. shows in the last two weeks, journalist Lepage says there was no announcement or explanation offered before the house lights suddenly came up. As the audience of 53,000 people filed out of the stadium, some 2,000 disgruntled concertgoers began to set fires, break into souvenir stands, smash windows, and overturn cars. Here's what a representative for the concert promoter said afterwards. The presenter's position is that there was a 45-minute set by Fate No More, an 80-minute set by Metallica, and a 55-minute set by Guns N' Roses. We have decided there is nothing further that our organization can effectively say at the present time. In fact, however, talks are scheduled for a possible makeup show this fall. While Guns N' Roses have had no comment on the incident yet, for another first-person point of view on the Montreal show, we've got Metallica drummer Lars Ulrich on the phone right now. How you doing, Lars? I'm good. I'm good. How is James? Is he in, still in the hospital? James How bad is, was he uh, burned? James is here in Denver um, with me, and uh, he's, uh, under the circumstances, doing incredibly well. I mean, it's a miracle. Everybody's saying it's a miracle that he got off, you know, with just uh, burns on his uh, arms and, and on his hands and a little bit up on his face. But, you know, considering he was pretty much engulfed in flames for about a full second, it's, it, all the doctors are saying it's a miracle he got off as good as he did. And he's, he's out here now in Denver with us, and there's a bunch of uh, doctors and, and burn specialists and stuff like that that are attending to him out here. And like I said, under the circumstances, he's, he's ver doing very good. He's very coherent. And he's, How did uh, something like that happen? Was Were the pyrotechnics... Pl in the same spot as they were every single night, yeah, or was that um, a... We were doing, it was in the song Fade to Black, and we were doing the same, it was in the same place in the song that we've done the, the cue for the whole tour, but our pyro man was extending the, uh, the flames to go all the way out on the sides of the stage, and when he was communicating that to James before the show about where the flames was going to be, there was clearly a, mis, a misunderstanding there about where they were going to be, and uh, James just... James basically just walked right into a flame that came up from behind him, that came up behind him, basically. Well, we're glad he's okay. As, as far as the riots are concerned, were you there when the trouble started? Yeah, we were, um, we were sitting eating dinner in our dressing room, and we were watching uh, guns on the, on the monitor in our dressing room, and, and it was clear that they were not having, uh, you know, one of their better shows. And I actually went in to take a phone call in the dressing room, uh, you know, to talk to our manager about James' situation. And, uh, and then I, I was told that Axel had just walked off stage. And at that point, we were just told to, you know, stay in our dressing rooms. And, and we basically just kept, kept to our dressing rooms and, and, and just, you know, things didn't really get too out of hand inside the venue as, as far as I, I could see. But it was mostly up in the concourses and, and up, you know, kind of outside, outside the place. And, um, 
And so, but, you know, nothing much really had, you know, nothing much was clearly evident from where we were inside the dressing rooms. And Have you talked to out. any of the Guns N' Roses members oh, yeah. since I mean, then? We, Do you know why they left the stage? Um, Axel still didn't feel like he was, you know, fully recovered with his, um, with his throat stuff. And, uh, you know, there's been, you know, what we have out here is a combination of, of our PA and, and, and some of their monitors and stuff like that. And it's just, it's not been completely right yet for both bands. And, and Axel just, you know, didn't feel like he wanted to, you know, uh, keep taking chances with his, his voice and stuff like that. And he, they'd been going through like monitor guys, like right, left, and central for the whole tour. And, and nobody had really been able to give him what they needed up on stage. And I knew that he had just come to the point where it was too much for him to deal with. Well, we know the Toronto show had to be canceled. Do you have any idea how many other shows have to be canceled and well, right when you'll be playing again? Yeah, right now we're in a, in a, in a waiting situation. Um, I was in after the show and sat down with Axel and, and we talked this through. And um, there's a definite, you know, both of us are obviously going to make all these dates up. And, and, I mean, that is our priority. And, and we're going to stop at nothing to do that. But right now we're kind of, you know, both of us have commitments starting around October 10th, which is kind of our cutoff date. So we're trying right now to schedule as many of the shows in up till, till you know, probably sometime in early October. What it's looking like is that um, there are two options right now, depending on how quick James can, can heal his hands and stuff like that. Right now they're saying that it could be as little as two weeks. So we're going to um, probably the next couple of days try and find a guitar player you know, who can, you know, be on standby if James's hands don't heal that quickly. And, um, which is basically, it, you know, there's two options, like I said. Basically, you know, one is waiting for James to, um, to completely heal and then go on and play, play the shows like that. Axel told me that, that Guns would definitely wait for us till we were ready. And like I said, the other option is to, um, to get a, a, sec a second guitar player that would come in and t play all of James's parts. And when James is ready to just get up on stage and go out and sing basically as a front man, then, then, that's, then he would do that. So those are the two options that we're weighing right now. And as soon as we, we figure out which one we're going to go with and, and where we're going to start playing again, obviously you guys will be among the first to know. So does it on Wednesday as had been planned? No, Denver is uh, officially postponed. And uh, right now there's uh, a make-up date for Denver sometime in the third week of September. And so that's, that's official. Denver is postponed till the, the third week of September. And we're basically taking, them, taking the, the shows on a one-by-one on a -one basis right now. But like I said, you know, the main thing is right now to, to figure out if, if James right. is going to be ready in two weeks, then we'll wait for that. Okay, and well, we hope he gets better as soon as possible. Yeah, Thanks so for taking the time me. to talk to us. Of course, have us at any time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. According to the latest word from the venue and the concert's promoter, damages were not as extensive as first thought, although no exact figure has yet been released. In Choose or News, Lou's News, meanwhile...